Neuropathy, a world without pain. A world without pain sounds good, but as a podiatrist, I know only too well that what you can't feel can hurt you. I manage many patients who have lost the ability to feel pain in their feet and legs, and this is termed peripheral neuropathy. Not only have they lost the ability to feel pain, but they can't, cannot feel temperature difference, which can result in bad burns if they're exposed to even a hot water bottle, um, or, or indeed burning their feet on, on hot tiles when on holiday. Also, they lose the, the pressure sensation, so it's difficult for them. Um, they get buildup of hard skin and calluses, which in turn can break down when cause pressure ulcers. So basically, they lose all the normal warning signals that you would have to alert you that there is something wrong with your feet and prompt you to take a look to see what's causing the pain. The first time a person with neuropathy may be aware they have a problem is when they take off their socks and notice blood or discharge on the socks or even an unpleasant smell. They could even feel unwell because they've developed an infection and are suffering systemic effects of that infection. Unfortunately, when the infection is left to progress, this can lead to gangrene and amputation. And sadly, it's many of these amputations that could have been prevented with good education, daily foot checks and seeking help immediately as soon as a problem develops. So what happens in peripheral neuropathy? Our peripheral nervous system has, um, is a network of nerves that lie on the outside of the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord. There are different types of nerves within the peripheral nervous system. There are our sensory nerves, which are responsible for transmitting sensations such as pain and touch. Motor nerves, which control your muscles and autonomic nerves, which regulate body functions such as regulating blood pressure and bladder function. So when things go wrong with the nerves, these can be the loss of signal is disrupted altogether. There is inappropriate signaling when they send a signal when they shouldn't be sending signals. And the, then there can be errors that do actually distort the nerve messages that are being sent to the brain. There are also different types of neuropathy that can affect uh, the nerves. Uh, when one nerve is affected, this is termed as a mononeuropathy. And the most common example of a mononeuropathy we see is carpal tunnel syndrome, where the nerve is trapped in the wrist, causing pain and discomfort in the hand. When three or more nerves are affected, this is termed polyneuropathy. And this is probably the most common one that we see in our practice. Symptoms people get vary depending on which of the nerves are actually damaged. So if you have sensory nerve damage, you can experience numbness, tingling, burning, stabbing, shooting pains. If you have motor nerve damage, then this can lead to a loss of balance and coordination and muscle weakness. And in the foot, this can result in a muscle imbalance. And instead of having nice straight toes, your toes can become clawed and retracted, leaving the ends of the toes and the plantar aspects of the foot more uh, vulnerable to pressure and leading to callus formation and corn formation and potentially ulceration. Autonomic nerve damage in the foot can um, produce a reduced ability of the foot sweating and this can lead to dry skin which in turn if the skin becomes too dry it can crack potentially especially around the heel area leading to fissures and then open a uh, wound for infection to get in. So the nerves in the feet have the smallest fibres and so are affected first and this damage can then travel upwards towards the knee and this is known as a stocking and glove distribution. It can also affect the hands too, hence the glove distribution. And this is term, termed a distal symmetrical neuropathy and is the commonest um, neuropathy we see with patients with diabetes. Unfortunate neuropathy can also manifest as, as painful symptoms as well as painless symptoms. And this is termed painful neuropathy. Painful neuropathy can be an extremely unpleasant condition. Um, 
the patient will experience intense burning or pins and needles or shooting stabbing pains and these are present constantly. Pain is particularly worse at night when the patient hasn't anything else um, to distract them from the pain and so therefore disrupting the sleep. It can have a severe impact on the patient's quality of life and may prevent um, problems working and with everyday uh, normal activities. So what causes neuropathy? Well, the main cause, as you probably are aware, is diabetes. And patients with diabetes, people with diabetes, um, the, about 50% of them will go on to develop neuropathy. The risk of developing it when you have diabetes is increased if your blood glucose levels are badly controlled, if you smoke, and if you regularly drink large amounts of alcohol. There are quite a number of other causes of neuropathy, such as excessive alcohol drinking over many years, uh, low B12 vitamins, and then of course if you have physical damage to a nerve or um, via trauma or by surgery, underactive thyroid and certain infections such as shingles or Lyme disease can lead to neuropathy, autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and drugs can also cause neuro, neuro, um, neuropathy such as uh, treatments you may receive for cancer such as chemotherapy. So how do we actually know if we've got neuropathy? I'm going to pass to Andrew now who's going to talk you through Thanks, Sam. That was an excellent start for us. So if, you, if you're if starting to con be concerned and, and worried that you might have neuropathy and, and uh, want to get this assessed, I'm going to talk now about the assessment of neuropathy and if you think you have it. So the key thing uh, to look at first off is, is uh, to think about the, the types of symptoms you get. And, and what we often do as practitioners, whether it's your podiatrist or another healthcare professional, is to look at the characteristics uh, of, of the symptoms that you're getting. So we're interested in, in the, uh, the onset of your pain, when the pain comes on, uh, what, what brings it on? Is it just from sitting or is it from certain positions? Where does it occur in, in your uh, foot? Is it uh, just in one particular site or are we looking at something that's widespread? As Sam mentioned about it being distal and symmetrical, uh, these are the types of uh, things we need to know about. So we want to know about your on uh, the onset, the location. Is it constant or is it intermittent? Do we see this? Uh, what's the duration of your pain? Are you constantly noticing it or do you just get it at certain times of the day? And, and what, how would you describe the pain? And that, that seems like a sh or, or, or symptoms, not necessarily pain always. Uh, how do you describe the characteristics? So the types of things we look for. Uh, things like throbbing sensations, burning sensations, pins and needles, electric shock-like symptoms. People will describe it in different ways. Feels like they've still got the socks on when they've not got the socks on. The socks are bunching up when they're not wearing socks. These are the type of symptoms that we're interested in. Well, we're interested in all types of symptoms but when we talk about neuropathy. These are the types of characteristics we're looking at. What aggravates your symptoms uh, and how are they relieved is, is important for us to help determine uh, if this is a nerve related problem. And finally, what treatments have worked for you in the past, if any. So that's the, that's where we look at first off in the assessment. We want you to uh, have a look and think about the, uh, the characteristics, uh, uh, all those elements to, to help us uh, start to focus our questioning. If you think you may have it, how can you test potentially for uh, some of the loss of sense. So what, what I'm going to mention next is about the sensory neuropathy, which is really quite an important one. Sensory neuropathy is often uh, our, our key uh, first uh, neuropathy that, that helps us know whether you're at risk of what we call full ulceration, which is a, a break in the skin. One way to do this, you can do this uh, with a family member who just touches the ends of the toes uh, and there is a there's a website called Diabetes UK where you can go and access something called Touch the Toes Test. So what we're looking at here is just using a finger just to touch the. So if we if we take our toes, we just touch different parts, uh, and this can give us the early indication of whether you may have sensory neuropathy. The other element, then you'll you'll see a healthcare professional, and what we'll look at next is to just try and quantify that level of neuropathy uh, and just, just decide whether 
it was the test on the day or, or whether there is a level of neuropathy. So what a podiatrist or, or your other healthcare professional might use is something called a 10 gram monofilament, which looks like a little fine needle, but it, it bends slightly as it presses against the skin. I've not got one to hand to show you, uh, but it, it bends slightly as you, as you press it to the skin and, and that will deliver a reproducible amount of pressure. So this will give us a bit more of a quantifiable uh, measure. What we can then look at next if we if we want to determine the level of neuropathy is to take on a few other tests such as a vibration which is literally just a, a tuning fork that we use and we can use a, a sharp and a blunt which is like a little tiny pinprick element uh, at the end of the we, we don't stab your foot so don't, don't be uh, concerned that we're going to stab your foot to assess we can we can check for temperature sensations visually looking for for uh, key markers uh, which we'll talk about in a moment uh, to, to give us an idea of whether this sensation checks. And then there are, and, and things like the, you'll have probably seen before, tendon reflex hammers. We can do an ankle reflex, uh, look at muscle strengthening, check for proprioception, which is the spatial awareness in your foot by moving the foot around uh, and, and asking questions as we do that. And then if we, if uh, in more severe cases, uh, you may well go for what's referred to as a ner nerve conduction study to try and find out the level of, nerve damage so so there are there are many hands-on tests we can do to start with uh, these are important to help us quantify the level of nerve damage but uh, the key point to start with is if you think you have it you can do these quick tests to assess uh, such as the touch the toe test and give you an idea as to whether you need to go and get it assessed further now it does sound a bit like all doom and gloom uh, uh, that you're going to develop problems but this will affect a lot of people. As Sam mentioned in, in diabetes, it can affect up to 50% of people with diabetes, but not everybody will go on to develop problems from it. It's the case of being aware of it and, and learning to check your feet on a regular basis. And the key things to look out for really uh, is having a, uh, is, is a regular check. And when I say a regular check, we need to get used to looking at our feet on a daily basis. If, if you're not necessarily able to reach your feet, um, asking a family member or a carer or, or a close friend if they can have a look at your feet and get used to knowing what your feet look like. And we're looking out for certain key bits and pieces then. So uh, Sam's touched on some of them uh, at the start of her talk. And, and, and a key thing for a podiatrist is things like callus and corns. That gives us an indication of pressure. We're starting to see red marks over bump, uh, bony lumps and bumps. And we're getting used to knowing what's, what's normal to your feet. Uh, so I'm going to pass back over to Sam now, who's going to talk a little bit more about treatment. And we don't apologise for uh, keep repeating the, the bits and pieces to look out for for, for checking. Uh, so I'll ha hand you back over to Sam to talk about treatments. Thank you, Andrew. So treatment of neuropathy actually depends, obviously, on the underlying cause. So we have to treat that underlying cause and all the symptoms that the, you are experiencing. So as I said before, if you have diabetes, the most important thing you need to remember is your blood glucose control. It really needs to be un well under well, sorry, under well control. Um, obviously your lifestyle changes as well. So cutting down on alcohol, stopping smoking, um, health, maintaining a healthy weight and obviously trying to exercise regularly too. If you have a vitamin deficiency such as B12, then B12 injections can be administered. Um, and also, um, also if you have other vitamin deficiencies as well, or uh, other health problems that can be, can be modified with uh, treatments. Um, managing symptoms of neuropathy. If you have neuropathic pain, unlike other types of pain and um, this doesn't commonly respond very well to your usual pain relief such as um, paracetamol or ibuprofen uh, neuropathic pain is usually um, often treated with uh, antidepressants or um, anticonvulsant drugs uh, usually in lower doses than um, they're used for in depression and epilepsy there are also topical treatments available, um, particularly if you have one area maybe on your foot that's um, particularly painful, um, such as capsaicin cream. Now this cream contains um, chili pepper 
and um, it has to be this if you're using this it has to be used with caution because it can actually irritate and burn the skin so it's very important that you use this um, very cautiously and not to apply uh, great amounts of it because it can produce burns and unfortunately I have seen this in clinical practice um, other things you can use for um, contact to try and dampen down the nerve, um, nerve pain is things like film dressings. You can apply that to certain areas of your foot uh, and that helps to reduce the pain. Patients often find that going to sleep, uh, going, or going to bed with socks on also helps because they've got that contact with the skin and it helps to dampen down the pain messages. There are also um, alternative and complementary therapies out there um, that are used, uh, such as acupuncture or herbal remedies. Now, evidence for these obviously um, isn't very clear, uh, but some people do find these useful. But just a word of caution, if you are going to try herbal remedies, that you please discuss this with your GP, as um, a number of herbal remedies can interact with medications that you may be on for other health conditions. Uh, other treatments we can have to relieve symptoms are physiotherapy. Uh, they can help you if you have some muscle weakness or, or need help um, with walking aids. Um, and again, we can't reiterate this enough. Daily checking of your feet. If you have got neuropathy, it is so important to check your feet on a daily basis. Get to know your feet. Get to know what's your normal. If you notice anything out of the ordinary, any cuts, blisters, um, any redness on any bony areas of your foot, anything at all, uh, callus forming, it is important that you seek help and you seek it immediately. Please do not leave it. If you have dry skin, then obviously the application of emollients is important to and apply that on a daily basis, particularly around the heel area and the plantar aspect of your foot. Um, and good footwear is also important. Make sure you've got room in that shoe for your foot um, and the depth in the toe box as well. That's quite a common issue. Um, I mean, too shallow a toe box causing problems. And avoiding temperature extremes. Please do not put a direct heat onto your foot as again, this can cause you burning in and um, obviously ulcers again. So now we're going to go on to complications and Andrew's going to go through one of the first complications you can experience with neuropathy. Yep, thank you Sam. Uh, I'm going to reiterate again checking your feet daily because I don't think we've said it enough. <laughs> no, but complications uh, in terms of complications. So Sam's talked to you there about the, the, this, uh, the painful uh, neuropathy that we're talking about. Uh, this, is, this is looking at potentially the loss of sensory neuropathy so the, the complete loss this world without pain so it sounds like a fantastic idea but without pain we don't get our normal reception so imagine if you put your hand on a hot, hot grill uh, and you didn't pull it away in time this is the same type of uh, reflexes now on the bottom of the foot when we're walking we are subject uh, to a lot more pressures if you think about you can be up to three times if you're walking uh, you you will put your full body weight through your foot. If you're running, it can be up to three times the stresses of your body weight going through your foot. So it's a lot of pressure on the bottom of that foot as you're walking around. And what we know is that pressure leads to things like callus and corn formation, uh, that they can be our early warning signals that uh, there is a, a potential problem there. So if you have a loss of pain or neuropathy, uh, as the term is, and callus, that's an important a factor to keep an eye out for because this thing can then as the pressure increases and you're walking more and not necessarily getting the pain to get it checked and stop it can then lead to a break in the skin and this is what we refer to as an ulceration so if you're walking around on a on a an insensate a sensationless foot and you start to develop uh, enough pressure then the skin will eventually break down and the reason this is important for us to uh, to stress now is that the ulceration uh, is then very closely managed uh, by a healthcare professional such as a podiatrist and, and a whole disciplinary multidisciplinary team uh, need to be involved with this because ulceration is one of our main causes of, of infection uh, and ulceration is 
is one of our main causes of non-traumatic amputation. So not something caused by a, an accident, but something caused by a loss of sensation and, and, and general day-to-day -day problems. So it doesn't happen in everybody. People with ulceration can be treated and managed. Uh, what we do know is the sooner you come to see somebody, the sooner you get into that multidisciplinary team, the better uh, the outcome is. So within, within the uh, first days you notice this, you need to be seeing somebody uh, immediately to get it, get it treated. Uh, what Sam is, is going to talk a bit more uh, about is to look out for red, red and, redness swelling, uh, uh, but without stealing Sam's thunder. If you start to, to think you, you've got a problem, you've got a... Uh, and also, and you think he might be infected, it needs to be seen immediately. And, and when I say immediately, I mean within the next four hours, not the next time you go and see a podiatrist or the next time you go and see a GP. Because what we do know is that these problems do lead to amputation and they are preventable. Uh, so I think I've stressed my point is, is the, the fact that loss of sensation can lead to pressure, which leads to ulceration. So the, the sooner we spot it in that pathway, the sooner you recognise there's a problem, the sooner we can treat it and the better the outcome so I'll, I'll pass you back over to sam to talk a bit more about a few other complications uh, that we, we may see with neuropathy thank you so shark of foot is another complication uh, that can a, a person with neuropathy can develop um, it's one of the more serious foot complications of neuropathy and we all need to be aware of it whether you're the actual patient or whether you're caring for someone uh, it's important to recognise it early and start treatment early to prevent its progression, leading to um, quite severe deformity of the foot. So this occurs because when you have neuropathy, um, you may have an injury um, and you don't realise the extent of that injury. Um, potentially you could have broken, broken any number of your bones in your, in your foot. So because you can't feel uh, the pain of a fracture you may continue to walk on this foot and the more you walk on it obviously the more pressure it puts onto those bones and joints that are already broken and this then can start um, your foot to change shape and can alter the entire shape of your foot um, in, in extreme cases the whole arch of your foot can collapse and you end up with a, a foot that's shaped like a, a rocker bottom so basically the arch of your foot bulges out and once this has happened, it's then very, very difficult to prevent that um, area of the foot from ulcerating. Uh, and unfortunately, again, this is something that can lead to amputation. So what do we need to look for? What are the symptoms you need to be aware of that this condition may be starting? Well, the main one is, is swelling. Your foot will swell. It will also feel warmer in comparison to your other foot. You may notice um, um, a redness around the foot as well. So obviously this may get uh, confused with, with um, potentially being infection. Uh, but also in later stages, if it's not caught early, you may see changes in your foot shape. So if, if, if these, any of these symptoms happen, again, I can't stress enough, it is really important that you contact your healthcare provider as soon as possible, get the weight off that foot, because the more you're on that foot, the, the more risk you are at that foot changing shape. So treatment for this condition is to offload it, get the weight off that foot. Um, and to do this, we put patients um, in plaster casts. So like you would have if you'd have um, a fracture in your foot or your leg, you'd go into so a non-removable cast. But unlike a normal fracture, you may be in this cast for several months until the, the foot starts to settle and you would have regular imaging to um, see, see what's happening within the foot and, and are the bones starting to, to heal. So to finish off uh, a summary of our points, you need to remember obviously that if you do develop neuropathy, um, it is manageable and you would have some tailored education to yourself when you go for your annual check. You'd be given advice as to the main things to look for, and how to manage it. If you have painful neuropathy, there are treatment options available to you to help relieve the, relieve the symptoms you have. And as we can't stress enough, any concerns with your feet at all, any problems, then please contact a podiatrist as soon as you can or other healthcare professional. 
And again, if you suddenly develop a red hot swollen foot, this should not be ignored. Okay, medical attention should be sought immediately to prevent any further damage and potential amputation. You can find more information, as we said, um, on the Diabetes UK website where you can find the touch the toe, toes test and there is also more information about neuropathy in general and, and complications of it. We will be happy now to answer any questions you have in the live webinar. And please remember, what you can't feel can hurt you. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to our webinar this afternoon. Um, if you have any questions, please um, pop them in the chat box or if you want to put them in the question and answer uh, section. Um, we've ju yeah, I've just answered that one, haven't you, Andrew? Thank you. The webinars will be available um, for you afterwards as well. Andrew, is there anything you want to add to our presentation while we're waiting for any other questions? Uh, no, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, it's, uh, it was pitched at uh, a level that's hopefully suitable that you, uh, if you're a healthcare professional, you can share with your patients as well. Uh, it was our intention that it could be uh, useful for both practitioner and patients. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, share this with patients who experience neuropathy and help give them a bit of advice. But please feel free to uh, fire any questions. Someone's found it very informative. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. And we'll just reiterate that if you do want any further information, you can. Um, the Touch the Toe test is available on the Diabetes um, UK website. And also there's more information actually uh, on the College of Podiatry uh, website as well. On general foot advice too. Got a question, Sam. How yeah. neuropathic aggressive debride or not which i think is a fantastic question say that again it's how and <laughs> sorry. sorry how are neuropathic ulcers treated aggressive debride or not yes we do we're quite aggressive we're quite aggressive with our debridement for the neuropathic ulcer Absolutely, yeah. it's not about what you uh, what was the, what's the saying it's not about what you put on or what you not take what you off put so it's, on, it's what you take off isn't it yeah. <laughs> it's about offloading is about removing devitalized tissue, callus around edges, and hopefully remove them bio burdens that are on a wound bed and around the wound bed. <clears throat> Oops. What's oh hang on, what's the difference between plantar fasciitis and neuropathy? <laughs> <laughs> What we're looking at there is, is uh, when we're thinking about pain assessment, we're looking at three uh, factors usually. It's an oversimplification. We're looking at nerves, we're looking at musculoskeletal, and we're looking at vascular, uh, usually as our sources of, uh, of problems. When we look at plantar fasciitis, it's a musculoskeletal condition. Uh, that's, that's down to an overuse type of problem. It can cause a level of neuropathy if it causes a uh, nerve entrapment, uh, but neuropathy in itself is something slightly different uh, in, in, in terms of it's uh, sort of a chronic long-term condition that we're trying to manage uh, and, and try and relieve the symptoms of. Have we another question? I think there's another question coming through, isn't there? How common is, how common is Sharpo in practice? Well, it is supposed to be fairly rare, but um, we have actually we're actually treating um, six cases, I think we have at the minute, and two of those patients are actually bilateral Charcot's, which again is 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 pretty rare. So I don't know if it's just um, our area, and something in Salford's water. I'm not sure, but or whether we're just getting better at picking them up, and we seem to be picking them up more um, more early as well. Um, our, our staff are really good at uh, homing in on a, a warm, swollen foot. Um, so maybe it is because we're just getting better at recognising them early. Yeah, uh, uh, and from text, I think the problem is that it is that diagnosis, but so it's quite difficult, it's often missed. So I think some people who have had it don't necessarily get it diagnosed. 
effectively enough. So it's about who they see at the right the right time in terms of shark. Well, I think from from uh, reference text, it can be somewhere between one and uh, around about twenty percent of, of people. So it's it, it, it's quite that's quite a large sort of broad spectrum uh, diagnostic uh, grouping. So it, I think the basic answer is it is probably more common than we think, but uh, it's often misdiagnosed and, and mistreated. Sam, there's one for you there about vitamin B12. So vitamin B12, is it ever checked at a routine appointment for a patient with diabetes? Um, if we suspect um, the patient, well, if the patient uh, comes to us with uh, symptoms of neuropathy, yes, I would uh, request a B12 um, blood test within the blood test that we carry out. Um, we do that um, standardly in our clinic. Um, I assume... I don't know whether the GP may do a separate test, but we would do the test um, if the patient attended our clinic and then obviously um, write to the GP with the results of those tests. Compression therapy tolerated if pain is controlled. Yeah, it can be. You can, uh, we, we, we quite commonly use uh, compression therapy in, in uh, people with diabetes. Uh, it, it's about the suitability. It's, it's underlying causes. It's whether ischemia is a risk in those patients. Uh, if it's purely just neuropathic and venous, then the compression therapy is usually well tolerated. Uh, it doesn't necessarily aggravate the factors. I wonder if that's the uh, the question. Often when you've got uh, neuropathy, patients report that uh, by covering the limb, so as Sam mentioned in the video regarding about wearing socks at bedtime, that can actually be the treatment uh, for patients that, that kind of dampens down the or it overstimulates the the nerves, so the the the, the uh, brain stops listening to the uh, kind of the background noise that's going on for neuropathy. Have you anything to add to that? Would you say, Sam? Or no, I think that's a pretty good explanation. Sorry, I'm just checking. Uh, yeah, what? Oh. oh. What is your experience of patients wearing proprioceptive insoles in the early stages of neuropathy? Andrew? <laughs> I like giving you the biomechanics ones. <laughs> uh, it's not something I've ever really looked into uh, particularly. Uh, working with uh, the, the idea being that if you can control uh, proprioceptive insoles, it, it's not, I'll be honest, it's not something I've ever really used. Mm. Uh, I could, I'd come back to you and speak to our colleagues who work more in MSK. Uh, I work more in, in the wound care side these days. Uh, uh, I, it, it's not something I have knowledge of that I could, I could give you a fair answer to there, Helen, sorry. But I can, I can certainly come back to you if you want to, uh, I don't know how we can facilitate uh, uh joining this up well I'll, I'll find a way to, to try and uh, get an answer for that Helen good question <laughs> yeah, great question okay I think uh, just sorry just Everybody, checking yeah. there's no no other questions on there I can't see any no nope. hopefully we've answered all that we could yeah all right so thanks once again for uh, listening on our, our webinar this afternoon for in the Legs Matters Lounge and hope you found it really interesting. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you guys. Thanks.